Hello, and welcome to the next 22. We hope you've enjoyed our session so far, where we've been covering all of the product innovations that Google Cloud has to offer, as well as listening to what some other developers and customers are doing to unlock the business value on Google Cloud. My name is Jason Davenport, and I'm a developer advocate here at Google Cloud, and I'm partnered today by Prasanna Selvaraj, who is a solution architect with the Twitter development platform. Today, we're going to be talking about how you can leverage omni-channel using Twitter for all of the good insights and things that you can learn about customers, and then leverage that into business insights and activation for your team and across the stack. Last, we'll talk about how all this comes together using a new toolkit powered by Google Cloud. Yeah, thank you, Jason, and uh, thanks for having me here. So by using Google Cloud, uh, we built a toolkit purely based on the serverless technologies of uh, GCP. Uh, the Twitter API toolkit for Google Cloud is a framework to ingest, process, and analyze massive amounts of tweets and lets developers to detect insights, patterns, and trends across Twitter. So before I get into the design and architecture of the toolkit, uh, I would uh, love uh, to speak about the value of tweet. Uh, and uh, uh, let's, let's hear, out, hear it out from Jason. Yeah, thanks, Prasanna. <clears throat> so as I think about how we actually value a tweet, you know, there's so many things that go into that 280, to 280 characters and really creating that value. And if we think about you know, 280 characters being written by you know, hundreds of millions of users, what that really means is that we start to get to the world's largest focus group that we can leverage if our company is big or if our company is small. So what does that really mean? And like, what's in that data that's so valuable? If we think about what a tweet actually entails, these are re reactions and experiences that are unprompted, in the moment, authentic, and emotional. So let's break that apart. First of all, unprompted and in the moment really means that what we're getting from our customers is their stream of conscious for how they feel about our brand or maybe topics related to our brand or other things that may just be how our customers are feeling about you know, things going on in the world or sports or other topics. Next, these are authentic and emotional. What that really means is that for our customers, we get how customers are feeling at that point in time without any filtering or years or months worth of, of tuning on that. And then we also get that actual sentiment associated with that, not just you know, maybe a logical view of the world, but that truly emotional feel in that. So let's talk about how we start to translate that into business value. First, what we can do is we can identify trends in real time because Twitter at its core is a real time platform. Next, we can build brand affinity. And what this really means is that we're working to interact with customers and our brands where they want to be met. And so we can talk to customers in the way that they want to be talked to. They can interact with us in the way they want to be interacted with. And we can bring this together in a way that starts to create a virtuous cycle of engagement for our organization. And last, this helps us to identify those moonshot opportunities for the big thing that we can do next. If you think of something as simple as a parking garage, by analyzing tweets maybe of, of customers or based on locality, you know, relation to the garage, we could do things like understand maybe if there are additional services that we could be offering where our customers would then get even more value. And we would only know that because of what they had posted on Twitter at that point. So what that really means is that now we can start to think about our customer engagement along each stage of the customer journey from awareness. So do, do my customers know me and my brand to consideration? Would they actually consider working with me? to conversion, which means that they do want to work with my brand. And finally, with service. So how do they make sure that they need help and that they're getting the right help with, with the brand in that? All right. So with Twitter data, if we think about the value of a tweet, now let's talk about how Twitter data makes this such a unique platform that we can leverage. First off, all tweets are public, which means that we have all this vast information that we can start to decode and then understand key terms, trends, and insights from. Next, it's real time and conversational. So as users feel something, they're tweeting it. And it's using conversational language that we can better identify with and understand you know, what, are, what do those words mean and then how do those things actually trend. Last, it uses, we have deep historical insight. So because Twitter data goes so far back, if we think about conversational search and trends, we could understand where do trends actually change in terms of how people talk 
And maybe things that were you know, relevant in 2012 are no longer relevant today, and we have that huge history in order to pull that together. And then last, let's talk about some of the use cases. So first and easiest one is sales forecasting, right? With sales forecasting, we could use you know, tweets and, and Twitter impact to understand, okay, maybe we should be running different promotions. You know, what will a topic lead to in terms of more or fewer sales for our organization? We can also do similar things for new product introductions or NPI. This essentially allows us to use Twitter as that focus group and then understand how our customers want the best product or service from our organization and tune that to, to meet their interests. Customer support's a very common one. And here, what we're really focusing on is how do we take that potential negative sentiment experience and build it into a brand building opportunity? And then last but not least, how do we pull this all together with marketing campaigns and other data sources to really build that 360 degree view of the customer? All right. Prasanna, let me hand it off to you here so we can get into the fun parts and the architecture associated with it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so first of all, I want to second that, Jason, in terms of what you said uh, uh, for the value of tweet. So Twitter has long been considered a treasure trove of information, analyzing tweets to understand what's happening in the world, uh, what are people talking about right now, and how this information can support business use cases. So with uh, millions of monetizable daily active users, uh, it's no wonder uh, businesses large and small consider Twitter uh, to support their business intelligence. But the language is complex. Uh, the journey towards transforming social media conversations into actionable business insights often involves processing massive amounts of tweets in terms of organizing, collecting, and sorting them. Crucial to this process is Twitter API. Uh, it's a set of programmatic endpoints which lets developers to find, retrieve, and engage with real-time public conversations happening on the platform. Nice. So if I think about kind of the broadness and potential complexity of that, what are some of the things that actually make it hard to get insights from all that data? Yeah, so, so there is a high degree of friction when processing massive amounts of tweets. So a developer has to uh, choose and evaluate technologies, integrate them, uh, set up data pipelines, and this process uh, can take anywhere between 60 to upwards of 100 hours. And after investing that time in setting up the stack, they still need to sort through the data and see if what they are looking for actually exists. So that is definitely a high degree of friction. Yeah, I think as, as you and I were talking about how we make this better for developers, one of the core things was how do we go from 60 hours to 60 minutes? So how did we do that with Google Cloud? Yeah, absolutely. So with this friction, you know, we always thought, you know, indeed, it, there has to be a better way. So we chose the Google Cloud technology and built a toolkit to reduce the friction in Twitter data consumption and also decrease the time to value, as you said, from 60 hours to 60 minutes. So the Twitter API toolkit for Google Cloud is a framework to ingest, process, and analyze higher volumes of tweets to help developers harness the power of Twitter. So in under 60 minutes, they can install the toolkit and uh, start exploring the tweets for insights. So this toolkit can be used to detect macro and micro level trends across domains, industries, sub-industries, and verticals. So the toolkit reduces the engineering burden for the developers. So developers don't need to evaluate, choose, and integrate technologies. They don't have to build data pipelines. Rather, the toolkit automatically creates the cloud infrastructure, automates the data pipeline process to ingest tweets into the Google Cloud platform, and offers visualization of trends in an easy-to-use dashboard. Yeah, I think the, the core takeaways for me, right? One, needs to be serverless. So I'm only paying for what I use, but I can use it whenever I need it. Second, we can obviously scale. So to your billions of tweets, you know, how do I actually leverage that if I'm a, you know, a small business organization? And then third, you know, what is that capability? So how do I build on that with the other pieces of that? Yeah, t totally. So scale, auto-provisioning of the infrastructure, and uh, big data analysis are paramount to this uh, toolkit's architecture and design. So, so, so let us sift through this and uh, talk, talk, talk to it in detail. So the toolkit itself has five core components. Okay. Uh, so the crux of the toolkit is BigQuery, so uh, the rightmost lane in the, in the swim diagram. So all Twitter APIs that return tweets provide data encoded using uh, the JSON format. The tweet objects has a complex nested structure. Um, 
So BigQuery being serverless and uh, it's a uh, natural support for multi-cardinality is a perfect solution to translate the tweet object into its own schema. So which means developers don't have to translate the tweet object structure into BigQuery schema. The tool could automatically dust that with a single API call. And plus, uh, the tool could also leverage just the uh, batch upload API of BigQuery, which means you know, it can ingest 500 tweets at a time, a very crucial thing to handle scale in terms of millions and billions of tweets per day. Um, and in terms of uh, the compute layer, right, the uh, layer which is responsible to load the tweets into BigQuery, which is depicted in the purple middle lane, uh, are comprised of a tweet streamer and tweet loader service. The tweet streamer uh, service is responsible to listen to the real-time filtered stream APIs and temporarily pushes those tweets into your Google Pub subtopic. Uh, whereas the tweet loader service uh, uh, triggered by a cloud scheduler pulls the tweets from the Google Pub subtopic and uh, ingests back into the BigQuery. So uh, these two services are based on Node.js component and it could be deployed either on App Engine or Cloud Run. You know, again, serverless being the theme here. Uh, so sandwiched between the compute layer and the BigQuery is the Google PubSub. Uh, topic, which is the which acts as a shock absorber for this whole architecture. So, for example, when there is a sudden surge of tweets, uh, uh, the Google PubSub can handle the increased volume with the help of uh, the topic, and you know, temporarily push the tweets and lets the tweet loader work at its own pace to ingest uh, back into BigQuery. Um, and what brings uh, life to this whole architecture is the Google Data Studio visualization layer. So Google Data Studio is the dashboard used in this toolkit to detect insights and trends. The Google Data Studio connects to BigQuery via SQL connector. So once the tweets are in BigQuery, it's a matter of minutes uh, uh, when a developer can turn this into a, a nice looking dashboard. That's really cool. So let's, you know, those are obviously a number of products. How does the user get started with this? Yeah, so it's, it's, it's very simple. I mean, if uh, anyone has 60 minutes to spare, they can sign up for a Twitter API essential access. They can uh, sign up for a Google Cloud, uh, download the toolkit, and start playing around. That's really cool. So we've talked about how developers can start to unlock this data. Let's maybe shift now and talk about how business users can get the most value out of these insights. Totally, totally. So let me uh, illustrate a few uh, uh, dashboards that can be built with the toolkit. And before we get there, so what are the core capabilities that uh, a user would like to see from the dashboard, right? Specifically a business mm -hmm. user. So uh, they would like to filter the tweets. Mm -hmm. uh, they would like to surface uh, topics and trends. And uh, most importantly, they want to measure the business impact, you know, tie it to a higher value business metric and see, you know, uh, whether that kind of uh, moves down or moves up or, you know, uh, basically holds the needle there. So um, in, in, in the first example, you know, illustrated in this slide is a, real-time uh, gaming trends on Twitter, right? So the Twitter API allows you, allows a developer to filter tweets based on a specific topic, in this case, video games, right? So on top of this, Google Data Studio can be used to slice and dice the tweets based on metadata. So uh, tweet metadata, speaking of tweet metadata, examples could be like hashtags, mentions, or uh, uh, topics of interest based on tweet annotations. So all these uh, metadata can be surfaced as uh, insights. So for example, the hashtags and mentions are surfaced as pie charts, whereas the topics of interest are like overlaid on the top two tables. And it also gives the users to kind of you know, slice and dice with additional filters such as language, country, uh, time range. So net-net, uh, what a user can get out of this is, hey, uh, what is the most popular game uh, across the US? or you know, for a given game, you know, what is the most popular topic? And uh, finally, a user can uh, drill down into this topic and can get to the tweets which kind of you know, contributed to this trend. That's really exciting, and I think, you know, as I think about the funnel of, of building information, right, so we've been able to go through now, we've filtered our tweets to understand the topics and the, the trends that work most for us. How do we start to build metrics off of that? Yeah, that's a, that's a very good question, Jason. So uh, to, to, to illustrate, again, the power of Google Cloud uh, technologies, you know, specifically Google Data Studio, uh, here in this case, you know, the tweets are uh, sliced and diced with tweet uh, metadata. 
So for example, uh, this illustration is about aggregating the uh, conversations around eSports teams over a time series. So what this gives to your business user is basically they can understand a surge of a specific conversation and how that has contributed to your share of voice of a specific eSports team. Uh, and uh, finally, as I said earlier, you know, the user absolutely have the ability to drill, drill down and get to the tweet level and understand you know, what type of conversations contributed to you know, what kind of trend. And another example could be like, you, know, you can absolutely bring in the non-tweet metadata. So things like, for example, you know, in this illustration, you, know, you could bring in an a attribute like a gaming genre or game publisher. And uh, you can start uh, to understand, you know, what type of game genre uh, was popular for a given month. Uh, was it like uh, the first person shooter games or was it like action and simulation? And similarly for game publisher, you know, did uh, a specific publisher games trend? And you can find, you can start to understand for what reason they trended and, you know, what were the conversations in Twitter that contributed to that trend? So net-net, you know, you can intersect with tweet metadata, and most importantly, you can bring in additional attributes uh, that could be industry-specific or domain-specific, and you can absolutely get a new dimension and color that can give a different business impact or a different uh, picture altogether. Yeah, I think as you were talking, one of the things that certainly resonated with me was how do we really leverage all of the data that we have? So now we've gotten our Twitter data, we could get other marketing data, our sales data, and now we've really created a way to create that omni-channel view of our customer, interact with them better, obviously you know, help them do more with us and help us to actually do more for them at the end of the day. So thank you, Prasanna, for walking us through that. I think that was that was really helpful from, from our perspective. Yeah, totally, Jason. Yeah, my pleasure. All right. So it's as easy as these three steps to get started, which I think is fascinating and really great. First, download the toolkit from GitHub. Next, set up your Google Cloud project. And last, deploy the toolkit to your project. Once you've done that, you can start doing all of this different slicing and dicing and understanding how Twitter can really work best with your organization. With that, I'd like to thank Prasanna for his time today and being able to share the booth with him. And for everyone outside listening in, thank you again for your participation and really hope you enjoy the next upcoming sessions here at Google Cloud Next 2022. Thanks again and have a great day.